Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello hello everyone and welcome to this early access event courtesy of Wizards of the Coast for Phyrexia All Will Be One. And this will be our first draft. Let's jump right into it. Okay, pack one, pick one. We've got Solfim Mayhem Dominus. Pretty good uh, mythic rare. There's not a ton of burn spells that we can maybe double up with Solfim. There's a couple of creatures that could also work with it. So not necessarily the best Phyrexian horror out there, but easily worth first picking. But let's see what else is in the pack. Got a lot of red-black kind of sacrifice -y cards with a Charforger. Skitterling could also be good in black whites where you can enable Corrupted if the opponent has three or more poison counters. And uh, Sprinter is also an interesting one, good in the oil counter decks. And uh, let's see, the Fisher is also just a good blue card, can fit into a lot of different decks even if it doesn't have any particular synergy. Planar Disruption would probably be the second best card in the pack and you could make an argument for taking it over Solfim but we don't get the chance to play with the rares very often, so I'm going to try out the Mythic here. Even though we're passing a lot of red cards, which could be a reason to still take the good white card here. Okay, second pack. We've got the Conduit of Worlds as potentially a good late game card draw engine, if you will, to let us replay creatures out of the graveyard. Uh, not too many lands to replay necessarily. We've got kind of a Mediocre reanimation effects. Skywarden's good, just a big creature. Sawblade's Camp is actually one of the few creatures that could synergize with Solfim as it deals non combat damage, but I don't think I want to second pick it. So I'm leaning Skywarden at the moment, 5 5 minus reach. And uh, Splitter could also be worth taking if we end up more in a red white equipment deck, although after passing the white removal in pack 1, we maybe want to go elsewhere. And uh, just stick to red for the time being. That seems fine. Okay, that's a pretty late ossification. Great removal spell, just needs to enchant the basic lands, and then it acts as a removal effect until it leaves the battlefield. Anything else worth noting? I do like the Fern Strider as another large red creature can essentially gain haste and then give another creature haste as well. The Blazing Crescendo also an excellent trick that can provide a bit of card advantage. So there's actually a lot of good red cards here. Blast can be a good finisher, but probably don't need to prioritize it. And uh, there's a bunch more white cards, another Quicksilver Fisher. Yeah, Ossification I think is a clear sign that white is flowing, even though we gave up on white earlier. Next, we could take a Vanish into Eternity. Not a card that's amazing. Six mana to exile a creature is pretty expensive, but it can also hit artifacts or enchantments, which are plentiful in the set. Prophetic Prism, always great, especially in the blue-white artifact deck. But uh, probably don't need to take it here. Molten Rebuke, a little bit expensive for removal, um, but I guess it could be cheaper than Vanish, even if it's just a sorcery that deals 5 damage to creature or planeswalker. I think I go for Vanish over Rebuke. Pretty happy with the first copy of Vanish, whereas Rebuke is always kind of mediocre. And then we're passing a couple decent blue cards, especially blue white artifacts. The Shrapnel Slinger can take out an artifact. Always fine. The uh, Lookout would be at its best in red-white equipment and blue-white artifacts, so we could still end up pivoting into red-white equipment, despite not really having the equipment start here. We just have good creatures and removal, which is never a bad recipe and limited. Also pretty late Trawler Drake, this card could be excellent, and maybe it is worth pivoting into blue-red for it. Although, it kind of feels like white is flowing, so I should pick up on the white cards as well. Possible we just end up blue-white after all, in which case Drake is not at its best in the blue-white artifacts shell. So I might still prefer Lookout, which is also good in red-white. 
Okay, we've got a Noxious Assault, Charge of the Mites. Not a fan of the Dancer, and another Slinger. And then in blue, nothing too exciting. So, yeah, not the best pack. Could take a charge, which we don't have a ton of synergy with, admittedly. This is probably at its worst in uh, red-white. So maybe I still prefer a Slinger as just a cheaper creature we can deploy. And see where we end up. That's a pretty late Ravager as well. There's a chance we could splash it, although we're not heavy on the oil counters so far. But what else is there for us? Maybe the Bardiche? Could be okay in the equipment deck as a curve topper, although we already have a few expensive cards. Uh, not a fan of the Custodian. Resistance Reunited would be okay as a common trick in the Four Mirrodin equipment deck, but uh, we haven't picked up any equipment so far. So we'll probably start by taking Bardiche over Ravager, although that's a close one. Do have some decent uh, white cards here, although now there's a late Ovika. So I'm kind of regretting passing that uh, blue flyer earlier. Could still just stick to red-white equipment, take Splitter, which is going to be great. And ignore the blue-red bomb. But uh, yeah, that's surprising. I think I should just pick up on the signal if no one's going to be blue-red. I'll oblige. And then Sprinter has good synergy with oil counters, which blue-red wants to uh, play with. So we can pick that up. Not a fan of the Centurion, probably one of the weakest red creatures. And then I is more of a blue-white artifact card. Insight, probably better in blue-green. But, yeah, I might still play it in blue-red, but I think Sprinter gets the nod. Even the Skull Bomb would be decent. All right, now Sawblade Scam seems quite good. Good with Solfim, good in blue-red in general. So happy that wield. And uh, probably go for the Strider now over Blast. Since blue tends to have some flying creatures, so we're less in need for the opponent's creatures not being able to block. Alright, I'll take a Theorist. Not sure if I'll play it in blue-red. Wow, Trawler Drake making it all the way around. Well, glad we picked up on Ovika. Even the Insight also going last. So blue-red seems like a good spot for us to be at the moment, but we'll see if that holds true. Second pack opens Rhea Ivor. Not a huge fan of this, and obviously not in our colors. We've got a font, which is not very good either. Could always grab a Watcher, but feels kind of disappointing as a first pick. Um, maybe we can try and splash Ravager, even though we passed another one. But it's going to be somewhat tricky to splash if we don't pick up some more mana fixing. Uh, Cackler is probably okay in this deck, as we'll end up with a few oil counters. And there's a Crescendo as well. And I guess the Golem too. Yeah, maybe actually prefer the Golem, since we'll have a decent number of oil counters, hopefully. And this will pump the team. So, hope to wheel either Cackler or Crescendo. Wouldn't be sad with Watcher or Engraver either. Another Trawler Drake I'll take. Although now we have to start prioritizing cheap cantrips that help us proliferate. So we can both enable the Drake by casting non-creature spells, as well as add extra oil counters onto it to make it bigger. The uh, Bladehold War Whip would have been great had we still been red-white. But now blue-red seems like the way to go. And then I can hope to wheel Synthesizer here, which is also a decent payoff for casting some non-creatures. Just gonna find some non-creatures to begin with, since we're definitely lacking in that department. Okay, the Anointer should be excellent in this deck, since we'll end up with a few creatures that have oil counters on them. And then that can act as removal, although hmm, it's in the same pack as a Volt Charge. 
Maybe I should take the Volt Charge and there's a tiny chance we will anoint her, given that we've seen some red, green and blue, red cards go late. The Bring the Ending. Not at its best, but could still make the cut if we get one. And then there's the Fisher, which again doesn't have any particular synergy, but is just fine. Alright, we'll take the removal spell and then hope to wheel anoint her. And I should probably get the white cards out of the deck. Next up we have Augury, that's perfect. Cheap cantrip, proliferates, adds more oil counters. The Skull Bomb I would also happily take and play. Replaces itself, can maybe add some more oil counters as well. Chimney Rabbles, playable if we need some filler 4-drop, but probably better in red-black sacrifice. So, yeah, take Augury. If we wheel a Glistener Seer, I also wouldn't be upset about it. What did we get? There's another Strider, Free from Flesh, Raptor, a lot of great options. Even the land, although Raptor seems pretty good here. Even the Skull Bomb, the blue one. So this is tough. Possible I just want the extra non-creature spell here to enable some of our uh, Trawler Drakes. Yeah, we do have a couple three mana creatures already. So I could see Skull Bomb being better. But uh, a lot of great cards in that pack. Ooh, Unctus. We're not artifacts, but we can still use the ability to turn our creatures into artifacts. So it could be worth taking. Uh, Awaken the Sleeper. Better in red-black for sure. Cackler would be fine, and there's another Raptor. But Unctus should be decent just with the uh, Flying Drakes helping us discard and draw. So we'll try it out. And then, that's a late Nahiri. Wouldn't be able to splash that very easily since we don't have any mana fixing yet. The finisher, more for the equipment deck. So probably take a Raptor now, or a Watcher. One of the two. Looking at my curve, I could use more 2-drops. So that's a reason to grab Watcher. Even though a Raptor has a bit more synergy in the deck. Watcher is also quite good with Unctus. Happy with another Augury. Also close to taking a Surgical Bay just to improve our mana base by having a bit of Flood Insurance. But I think Augury's excellence with Double Trawler Drake especially. Got a few other Oil Counter Synergies. Theorist also better now with Unctus in the deck. And we did wheel some goodies. In fact, we wield all the cards we wanted. Um, I don't know if my deck really needs Crescendo. Engraver would be serviceable, although Watcher has my attention now with Unctus. Another flying creature, can't hurt. And hopefully we'll find more Cacklers later. Okay, we got a Synthesizer. Takes a little bit to get going, but it's still a 2-drop and our deck could use more of those. Glistener Seer also. Worth considering, as it can scry a bunch. But we seem to have picked up a few ways to improve our draws. And I'll take a Fisher now. Okay. Well, happy with a pivot into blue-red. Cards are clearly flowing in this direction. Can take Seer over Curator, since we don't have a lot of great removal spells to get back with the Curator. And now I'll take the land over free from flesh, even though it could be playable in our deck for sure. And the last pick, Anatomist. Not sure if that one will make the cut. Okay, opened Watchful Blister Zoa. Monuments could actually be playable in our deck, but it might even wheel. And uh, I'm hesitant to add a colorless land to the mana base without any mana fixing. Blister Zoa, on the other hand, is great, especially with the extra proliferate from Augury. And hope to wheel, maybe bring the ending for a bit of interaction. 
would love to see more removal spells. Okay, another Volt Charge will do. So pick that up. Hope to wheel Insight as a card draw effect. So looking at our curve, we can have a better idea what the deck looks like. So yeah, it seems like we're rounding out the deck nicely. And uh, the two burn spells also great with Solfim, of course. So I might actually want to pick up that one damage effect at four mana just because we can double with Solfim. Okay. And Anointer did not wheel in the previous pack, but we'll make sure to take one now. And then still hoping to get an insight on the way back. Another scamp would actually be decent too. Also works well with Anointer, but I don't think I can pass this one now. Ooh, Grass, Unstoppable Juggernaut. Not gonna be at its best in our deck, would need a bit more ramp and maybe more tokens for this to really shine. So I think I'm gonna pass up on it. Question is Curiosity vs Insight. This is draw 2, this is draw 3, and Proliferate. But we might get another Insight on the wheel, and I might prefer 1 and 1 instead of 2 Insights. Yeah, close call. Insight is pretty nice with the uh, Enigma Goliath as well. And I think I prefer the card draw over Sprinter, even though Sprinter would be decent still. Okay, what do we have now? Rabble Salvo. That's awesome. Even without any equipment in the deck, 3 mana for 5 damage, I'll happily play. Doesn't go face, so that's the only drawback here, but... Uh, passing on Imperfection, which I may or may not have played. We're mostly tapping out. Got a couple instants, like the two... Auguries that we can maybe keep up alongside Imperfection, but that's fine. Strider, I will also take if we get one later, but uh, seems like time is running out. That's another late Trawler Drake. I feel like I have to take it here. Escaped Experiment's pretty bad. Scamp, I wouldn't mind a second. Skull Bomb, also quite good here in our deck. And a Blade of Shared Souls is also great. Don't quite get to copy legendaries with it. Yeah, Blade could be good in our deck. But um, kind of like the Triple Drake Red Sun's Twilight. Isn't always going to have a ton of targets, but when it does, it's pretty excellent. So it might be worth a shot over Crescendo. Batterfist would also be playable since we have... Salvo, and it is a non-creature spell to enable Trawler. Alright, Apparatus is pretty cute, but I don't think it's gonna make the cut in our deck. Don't quite have enough instants and sorceries for it. But uh, another Synthesizer or Splitter. Kind of like Splitter with all the flying creatures we have to just increase power. It's a non-creature spell, so it has a lot of synergy across the deck, actually. Doubt I'll play a second Fisher. Maybe we'll play a Monumental Facade. And we wield Insight like we suspected, but that's fine. I might play a second. Or, and a third. So that's what I mentioned earlier. Might have been better off with something else. Alright, Crescendo might play one of those. Okay, so we did not lack playables despite switching colors midway through the first pack. Seer might be questionable, but it's still decent. Not sure about Bring the Ending. Definitely like Augury, Synthesizer, Double Watcher, Crescendo's a maybe, Slinger's a maybe, especially now with Twilight, which might also be in the maybe pile. We'll try Unctus. Sprinter should be okay. Add more oil counters to the Drake as a mana sink late game. Salvo, double charge, golem, all excellent. Anatomist can easily be cut. So a theorist, when it or another artifact enters, we get to draw if we do discard. We have Skull Bomb, Double Watcher, Golem, Unctus as artifacts. 
and I guess even Splitter and Anointer. So Theorist might actually get there. And then the other four drops are all great. Fisher, Cuttable, could cut at least one Insight. I like Strider, Skywarden should be fine. Blister Zoa and Ovika. So, yeah, I guess we'll cut all these. And then if I'm playing 17 lanes, which I think I should, I need to make four more cuts. So yeah, no shortage of playables, that's for sure. Do I maybe cut the artifact package? Unctus I think is still worth it, just because we have all these flying artifacts. Uh, but I might cut uh, Theorist, since it is kind of small. And then maybe I should cut one Insight. Although who doesn't like card draw? I guess Seer can go, even though it works with oil counters. I'll keep this camp because it's pretty nice with Solfim, doubling the damage. Do have a lot of three drops, although two of them or three of them are removal. So we're not always going to play those on curve. Yeah, maybe one insight needs to go. Although we don't have a ton of card draw, I guess Unctus helps. Got Double Watcher to cantrip. And then Augury to find our more impactful cards. Yeah, maybe I can get away with just one insight. Pretty even split between blue and red. I'll play the monument just to see how it plays out here. How does our deck win the game? Well, we've got a ton of flyers which should get the job done. If we're going to play defense with our ground creatures, we may not need the uh, haste from Strider as much. So I could see cutting Strider, keeping Skywarden as a better defensive creature, and keeping the curve a little bit lower. Yeah, I think that makes sense. With argument that we win with flying creatures, I could see cutting Scamp, although there's still a way to enable Anointer, yeah, we're not really a burn deck. Alright, fine. An extra flyer over Strider, I guess. Could always play Crescendo to get extra damage in with a Watcher, but again, I don't think that's how our deck necessarily wins the game. Could always try a Red Sun's Twilight. Would definitely be an all-star if we're playing best of three against artifact decks. Alright, we'll try this. Maybe I do want an, a second inside, actually. It is pretty great with the Trawler Drake, as we get to grow it twice. And it's great with uh, Ovika as well as another expensive non-creature spell. Alright, I think we've finalized the deck now. Let's go. Okay. Hand seems keepable, although would like to pick up some cheap creature, maybe a 3 mana. Got a couple of those. Probably just get the Furnace out of the way. Then play Augury on 2, maybe find a Drake and then grow it with a Skull Bomb. This is an instant, so we can keep it up. Ooh, Spell Dancer scary. Okay, Ovika is pretty far away, and we do have a Blister Zoa at 6. So I should probably go for... Sprinter, although it's not the best against Spell Dancer necessarily. Could take a Synthesizer, play it, and play a Skull Bomb in the same turn. Although it's gonna take a little bit to get to four counters. Skull Bomb is one, inside is plus two, so we wouldn't be incredibly far off. Or I can just take Ovika and then try and hit my land drops. Might just grab Ovika. Since we have inside to help hit our land drops. Now a second insight. Well, I guess it is an expensive way to make a lot of goblins, at least. So, might end up bouncing Spell Dancer with a Skull Bomb, especially if it picks up an oil counter here. Trawler Drake, yep. Opponent knows what's up. Golem's not bad. So, play Golem. And then we could still sacrifice Cold Bomb. 
but I might wait until these pick up more oil counters. Curiosity, draw two. That happens. Strange that they played it second main. There's our monument. Yeah, I think insights. Just make sure we hit Blister Zoe to Ovika. And then I should attack since we're not blocking. Would love to pick up some cheap removal, although now Skywarden also another way to block an opposing Drake. We'll eventually need to answer Spell Dancer though. Probably go for Blister Zoa next turn, unless our opponent keeps up mana for a potential counter spell. Okay. Let's go with the Blister Zoa. That's too bad. It's gonna stay tamped down so we don't even get to draw the cards from a dying. This opponent gets to deal a ton of damage and proliferate, so that was not what the doctor ordered, and now we might be in trouble. Our land is not what we needed. So I can bounce the Trawler Drake with a Skull Bomb. Only as a sorcery. Can play my own Trawler Drake as well. That's probably what we need to do. And then I can activate Facade to put an extra counter on it at least. And the Golem also helps. Could bounce a Spell Dancer too. But yeah, the Drake is lethal, whereas Spell Dancer we can hopefully draw an answer next turn. Not that on board at least, even to a removal spell. Although if they can double something with a spell dancer, that could also be bad. So I need to find one of our three burn spells. The four drop that deals damage equal to the number of oil counters could also work. So we've got a couple outs. And there's a Volt Charge, alright. Put on this card's a black card, so they're clearly missing a color. Now, how do we proceed? We have 8 mana total. Volt Charge on Spell Dancers 3. I'm gonna main phase it to make sure it works. So we have 5 mana left, so probably go for Sky Warden. but uh, Golem can attack for sure. And don't want to die to one more removal effect. Another Doze, yep. Yeah. At least we've got a Reach creature back. But uh, this card's pretty good against us. And now we can play Ovika. Okay, need to survive another turn. And then we get to draw with Insight, perhaps. Synthesizer. 
not too scary. Augury is good too. All the tokens we generate do have haste, so might set up a pretty powerful attack. Another Volt Charge is great. And a Salvo. So I can Volt Charge and play another Flying Blocker if necessary. Proliferate doesn't matter too much. Just thinking if for one blue mana they could have a plus one, plus three. Yeah, there's not much they can have really. So we'll try this now. Worked. Get more Hasty Goblins. And then maybe Augury. And then let's say we attack with all, they chump Ovika. It's five, yeah, that should be plenty. Okay, let's attack with all. This has Menace. And even if they could chump Skywarden, they would still take 12 at least. Awesome. Well, opponents couldn't find their second caller, but we managed to come back from the brink of death. On the play, and test potential. Yeah, I've been pretty happy with the facade alongside Trawler Drake especially. And mono blue so far, and uh, see if the Drake resolves. Blue black, typically more controlling proliferated deck, and Edict gets our Drake. Well, we've got another Drake, or we could play Splitter. Splitter is more mana efficient. If we play Drake, it grows, and I guess we can still use Facade to uh, grow it a little bit, so it's not completely mana inefficient either. Probably want to hang on to at least one counter so we can still proliferate onto it, also important for the anointer. Synthesizer, yep, and hybrid. Okay, thing just play another drake and pass. And then next turn anointer could take out synthesizer too. And we just want to make our team bigger than the hybrid instead of trying to kill it. So this time I won't be using the facade. And then now with double drake, we can start unloading our non-creature spells to get extra oil counters. Not too concerned about the toxic one here. If they want to poison me, that's fine. Once they get closer to three poison counters, that's potentially a concern. Alright, just a Fisher. So that's a juicy target for Anointer now to take out. Alright, that's fine. Not planning to block hybrid, so we'll attack. And then land is great. The splitter also discounts salvo, which is also quite nice. And our drake is gonna take a nap. Right, synthesizer. Three oil counters already. So, don't really want to trade Anointer for a Hybrid, I don't think. So do we just play Splitter this turn? I think that makes sense. And we'll pass.
opponent's got Tyrone Drake into an Immobilizer. Alright, Synthesizer now 3-3 three, three unblockable. Which we might have to salvo. Although the Drake's also threatening. Ooh, Solfim. That's a fun one. Now the most efficient play would be Insight. Although even if I had a land drop I wouldn't be able to salvo, but that's maybe okay. Yeah, let's just... Insight. We might see Immobilizer tap down our Drake before attackers. Although they might wait to tap down a creature end of turn. Just want to hit a couple more land drops. And then by proliferating onto the facade, we'll be able to activate that as well. Okay. Um, do we want to trade for hybrid? Not really. I have to imagine they have a way to proliferate. Another dose, yeah, that'll do it. So they can attack with all now. So definitely time to unload Salvo. Full charge, nice too. Okay. So we can take care of two creatures. Synthesizer and Drake. Full charge could also be nice with Solfem to double, but I don't think that's gonna happen this game. And then I'll maybe put a stop on end step in case they sag the land, I can still play my removal afterwards. And that's all we get to do this turn. Otherwise I should put an upkeep stop. Okay, so now we can Salvo the Drake. And charge the Synthesizer. Not out of the woods yet, still have a immobilizer to worry about, but at least we stem the bleeding. Glistener Seer is acceptable. And Hybrid stays back. Okay. Can't quite play Ovika, could play Golem plus Sprinter. Or I could play an extra flying blocker, although hybrid's likely to want to trade here. And then Sprinter putting an oil counter on one of our creatures will also make it bigger thanks to the golem. So now we'll put oil counter on anointer. And then I don't think I attack with a sprinter since I don't want the trade to happen. And then next turn we can maybe attack with all. Eh, opponent jumps anyway. Skull Bomb to bounce. If we draw our own Skull Bomb, we could also maybe bounce a Drake, but that's not great when we reset all the counters, of course. Kill the tokens, nice. Although we still have the equipment. So if I put oil counters on the golem itself, it also turns into a three-powered creature. So now I can play Solfim plus Sprinter. That seems good. Alright, ah, opponent's gonna counter. Fair enough. So now do I want to equip Splitter? 
onto Golem. Yeah, we'll just move to Combat and then play Solfem. I guess I also had the Facade to maybe put Oil Counter on Golem, but I'm gonna need my mana for Solfem here. Seems like a free attack, but our opponent calls our bluff. And then next turn we get to play our bomb. Solfem is pretty good too. Okay, opponent happy with their draw step it seems. So that's concerning. The Black Skull Bomb makes sense, they were looking at the graveyard to see which creature they could return. Might be the Fisher. And then they can discard hybrids and maybe get it back with another Proliferate. Okay, 4-3 Flyer. It's pretty scary when we're at 6. Okay, so Facade counter on Golem. And then I can still play Ovika. Yeah, the Acre Plate's been impressive. And if our opponent takes it, the ward will prevent him from tapping our flyer down. So we may see a trade or a trump. Okay, so we're still in trouble if they find two damage. Although in blue-black that's not super likely. Next turn we can always draw with our Furnace to hopefully find some more non-creature spells and Ovika gets it done. Awesome, very close game here. On to the next one. On the draw, hand seems keepable. Yeah, Facade's done some good work for us. So can't complain. Opponent with a turn one Skull Bomb. Black green. Typically a heavy poison deck. But a watcher can maybe trade for a one toughness creature at some points. Don't think I trimmed the rats just yet. Basilisk. Okay, probably have to kill the basilisk. Although, it doesn't feel great to have to Volt Charge this early. But so be it. And then we get to Proliferate as well. So, can hit for one. Maybe pass and see what our opponent does before deciding on the Volt Charge. Although, could run into a Pump Spell this way. Next turn I could play and activate Skull Bomb. Which may be worth it to just delay some uh, toxic synergies or corrupt it more likely. Alright, Restoration, get back Basilisk. And proliferate a third poison counter, so Corrupted is online. And a steward. Okay. I think Skull Bomb activate. And then the question is what to bounce. Have to decide now. How much do we care about the toxic damage? Yeah, probably better to bounce the rats, I assume. Could have also played Sprinter with a plan of trading with it. But I'm kind of looking at Sprinter as a late game mana sink to provide more oil counters.
opponent deciding what to do with one mana. I guess they could sack a Skull Bomb to cycle it. Ooh, Anointer is nice. So if I use Facade on the Watcher, we go up to two oil counters already. Although I'm imagining just playing a Sky Warden here is fine. Doesn't block Basilisk all that well, but can hold off the Steward. And then against Black Green, Blister Zoa should be nice too. If it dies, it's likely getting destroyed. Opponent searches for another swamp. And the rats. Okay, and an annoyance. Yeah, we had three poison counters, so that's why preventing corrupted in the first place can be important. But so it goes. And I guess that also could have exiled Blister Zoa, so it could have been worse. Decisions, decisions. Yeah, I can at most deal two damage with Anointer this turn. Which is okay. Um, could take out either Blight Belly or Steward and presents a 4 2 blocker. Blister Zoa holds off everything except for Basilisk. And then next turn, this can deal three damage more easily. Yeah, I think Blister Zoa is still the play. So they could pump Basilisk with a steward and probably take it in that case. And then next turn I could set up the Anointer to deal 3 damage by using the Facade. Up to 5 poison. This will proliferate when it dies. So we take 5 and 1 poison up to 6 counters. Still seems acceptable. Or I could jump with a Watcher, but I'm probably going to need Watcher to set up the Facade. I guess this one also has Toxic, so we go up to 7. Alright, so I have to be playing defense now a little bit, or at least mitigate more poison. So if we play Synthesizer, I can put a counter on it, and then Anointer deals 3. Take out Basilisk, have two extra blockers back, that seems good. And then we also get more counters on the Synthesizer, which we want anyway. Opponent at 9. And if they're not careful, we could maybe get them with a Sprinter. Which could also put counters on Synthesizer, plus one from Facade, so we could actually make it unblockable next turn. So that's five, plus three is eight. That they may not be able to prevent. And then Sprinter having haste could also deal a little bit more. Happy to trade Anointer, but we'll see. Yeah, can't stress enough how useful the Facade's been in this deck. Kinda dismissed it a little bit, but uh, it's been performing. 2-2 Death Touch, Lifelink, Flying. Yeah, that's annoying. Could also put more counters on Blister Zoa, so then if they trade I at least get to draw more cards. So maybe we'll just keep it back and then next turn replay Sprinter to set that up again. Just attack with Synthesizer, and that's it. Sure. Okay, Scourge of 4-4. So, Pump Spell would be bad. So I think I should just jump instead of trade with Blister Zoa. Get more counters on Blister Zoa, and then maybe trade. And draw more cards in the process. And 
Now we get to draw off Watcher too, of course. Can get too aggressive at 6 life and 7 poison. What if I play Sprinter and attack with everyone like a madman? I guess they would have to trade for two creatures. Although I'm very vulnerable on the way back. If Sprinter attacks, they likely trade for rats. Yeah, close call. If I'm about to draw a bunch with Blister Zoo after trading, I may not have the mana to replay Sprinter a bunch, so maybe it's fine to trade it off now, since it's not going to be back on defense anyway. Alright, opponent accepts. Proliferates. At least I used the last oil counter on Steward already. And I think I just cash in the last oil counter here on Blister Zoa. Probably should have played Island there. Alright, just Basilisk attacking. In that case, trade for Anointer. How many removal spells have we seen so far? A full charge and a Skull Bomb. So we've got a couple burn spells left and, of course, a ton of flyers and card draw. I think we'll stay conservative here, keep Blister Zoa around, hoping they can't exile it with another Anoint with Affliction. Another Blind Belly to proliferate. Scary. Although Augury to the rescue, perhaps? Removal for Scourge would do it. Splitter is plus two unblockable damage. Not quite enough. Do I grab the insights? I guess what I can do is... If I attack with both, they're forced to block with a Scourge. So then I'll still get to draw four cards, or I guess five cards after proliferating. So I probably just grab the cheapest card I can play. So I still have more plays to make after attacking. Alright, well, those were some unexciting draw steps. Can play Watcher and Drake. Did end up getting punished for not playing Island last turn, since I wouldn't be able to play Furnace then. But so goes. Uh-oh, that's uh, gonna represent some damage as well. Okay, so I got a Trump. Take four down to two. So we're not killing anything from the opponents, we're not taking more than one Toxic. And then I just need to find some more card draw off the top to grow the Drake. And hopefully kill them next turn. We get to draw off Watcher as well. Nine Poison. Salvo. It's not quite a Volt Charge, but I guess I get to play it here. No downside to killing Vran now. That way any non-creature spell presents lethal next turn. Alright, Golem should do it too. Wow. What a close one. Luckily, the mistake of playing the wrong land didn't end up uh, costing here. Otherwise, we might have been able to get one more draw step. Well, we've got our late game flyers in hand, which is not the best place for those to be. But I'm not going to turn down some nice interaction early. Okay, turn one lookout. So it could be blue-white artifacts, could be red-white equipment. I think that's where a lookout shines. Alright, green-white instead. At least it doesn't poison us. Well, the 1-2 Flying Vigilance does beat a 1-1 Flying Vigilance. 
Do we want to bounce and draw? And wait on the Volt Charge? Yeah, since I also kind of want to find a play for next turn, which we don't have yet. Right, now we've got a Sprinter at least. And there's more. Thirsting Roots. Okay. I'll go with a 4-drop now. So we're about to take our first poison damage. Unless we want a chum block, but probably better served waiting till we can prevent more damage later. Main reason to chump is hoping to draw 5-drop I can play next turn, or maybe a 2-drop I can play alongside Sprinter to have a more efficient turn. So there's still an incentive to maybe want to chump. Although, especially if they kill my token, it's nice to have another creature to equip. So we might also just end up moving the equipment to the Watcher. So our opponent's got four cards in hand, five mana. And we're doing a good job of getting to our late game, which is where the big flyers can take over. Okay, just this here. Also nice to have a Watcher to maybe get in the way. And a Synthesizer, perfect. So now Synthesizer plus Sprinter put counters on Synthesizer. And then uh, next turn Volt Charge can already maybe make it unblockable. Could get a bit aggressive here, but I'm happy keeping Sprinter as a late game play alongside Blister Zoa. So I'm just gonna chill. Don't necessarily want to trade my 4-2 for the lifelinker either. Although if they pump it a few times, then I might go for it. We're down to 11. If we don't draw lands, it might be a Volt Charge turn instead. That canopy kills Splitter itself. That's acceptable. So just double checking that we don't want to attack first. And I think I keep the rubble back. Well, that's a problem. Our deck does not deal with uh, Paladin very well. I guess I can try and double block it now, but that feels bad. I could also block with Blister Zoa and finish it off with a Volt Charge. Yeah, I think that's going to be better. And then load a bunch of counters onto the Blister Zoa with a Sprinter first. If the opponent's last card is an answer to Blister Zoa, this could be very bad. But I'm kind of liking this setup. No attacks. And then we want to Volt Charge before damage to get the extra Proliferate. I guess Synthesizer could also allow us to double block. Alright, I guess I should Volt Charge now. In that case I can also maybe block with Synthesizer if necessary. Alright, let's give this Blister Zoa block a try. Does seem like they have some interaction. Well, if it's the Tyvar pump spell giving Hexproof and Indestructible, then there's no point in double blocking. If it's Titanic Growth, double block doesn't help. So I think I should just jump and see what happens. It's technically a trade. Alright, complete devotion. Alright, double block would have been better. But we still get to draw a bunch. And 
and a Plague Nurse, which can give additional Toxic. Well, that was not a great turn for us, but uh, maybe I just have to take a hit from Paladin. Although it's gonna be scary, since it could put us down to one poison essentially, or nine poison. Just try and play Ovika here. I guess I could still double block the Paladin. Although it would be nice to get to make a few goblins first. Now let's hang back. Our deck doesn't have many great ways to deal with 6-7. Uh, That's where the Doze would have been helpful in blue. We failed to find a Drake to start growing, which may have been able to get large enough for the Paladin. Yeah, that's a problem too. At least we still get to make our goblins. So that's not shut down. But the goblins don't block Paladin, which is a problem here. And our opponent's gonna send in everyone. Okay, so that's six toxic, one toxic, two toxic. So I definitely have to block. Double block the nurse. Take it out at least. But then I lose my only creature capable of blocking Paladin for the time being. But at least we're not throwing away our cards. I'll go to 9 poison. 6, 7, 8, 9 and 2 life. So not a great place to be. But at least Watcher grows once we play Unctus, so that's helpful. Sulfim. Feels like that's not going to help enough. We can, however, make it indestructible to hold off Paladin. So it's not the worst. Although there's still some other issues at hand. So let's say we play Solfim. It's going to be three mana since I don't have the life to spare. So the only thing I can do besides Solfim activate is cast Augury. And then Pona still has three attackers. I'm going to have to jump Raptor. So that's not amazing. Can we use this at instant speed? We can. So I don't have to decide to make it indestructible now. So yeah, I guess play Solfim. And then pass with Augury and the ability at the ready. Which will require two cards as well. Don't know if Sprinter is all that helpful at this stage. Uh oh, Haste Creature. At least we can make some goblins here with Ovika to chump. Alright, let's see where we end up. Alright, so inside makes a lot of goblins versus Anointer, which doesn't deal pretty much any damage. I guess Sprinter can add an oil counter somewhere and then Solfim doubles the damage from Anointer. So I could deal two total, still not all that impressive. So I probably prefer the card draw at that stage. Submit zero. <laughs> Don't want to proliferate the poison. Go to blockers. So this is the only block on Paladin. Chump Atrocity. Have to chump Raptor. And then we get to trade for the Mandible at least. So I'll go to one. Discarding Land Sprinter. Get to draw. And a Chorus. So they've got two blockers back. Full Charge. Doubled by Solfim. It's pretty good. Now there's still two lethal flyers to deal with. So that's kind of the problem now. 
Uh, can I deal lethal this turn? Doubt it. I can insight, and then I'll have two mana besides Volt Charge. So maybe if I find another Watcher, I can survive. Found a Salvo, although we don't have the mana to cast both removal spells. If only I had uh, the equipment still in play. Drake also the only play available. So I think we're at the end of the line. If I full charge upstairs, it's six damage. Uh, I get three more goblins. Bones at thirteen. Eight one one tokens. Get them down to five. Not quite. Although, quite close, actually. So I think my only play is pass. Hope the opponent doesn't attack with both flyers for some reason. I guess hope they double block, and then I can kill the other flyer. Alright, that works. Very close. Alright, GG's. Triple indestructible, but still not enough to survive here. Nine poison, one life. Doesn't uh, get any closer, really. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems keepable. Missing a few oil counters, perhaps. Roots to get a basic. Mono green so far. Alright, black, green, skull dweller on one. Picked up a drake. So I think I still prefer golem. And then drake, and then maybe anointer to take something out. Alright, clean answer. Plus a poison counter. Now we can go drake into skull bomb at least. And hopefully next turn anointer. I already miss not having the monumental facade in my mana base. Alright, third poison counter enabled. So corrupted is online. And a drake down. Okay, time for Solfim. And then should I hang on to a land? To maybe make it indestructible. I mean, I could play Solfim, play a land, and then be able to make it indestructible, which may be worth it too. Even if it costs me four life here. Against blank green, I guess it could have another edict effect. This is minus x minus x. There's some exile effects too that are now enabled with corrupted. So making Solfim indestructible is not a guarantee for it to stick around. Dune Mover is fine. Swamp on top. So now Volt Charge deals 6 damage, which is pretty neat. Do I want to sack Skull Bomb? Could bounce the Dune Mover again, feels kind of weak. Could bounce Skull Dweller and then attack. Ideally find a, an oil counter source so Anointer can just take out the Skull Dweller instead. So maybe it's worth it to draw to try and find one. I mean, there's not that many cheap ones I could play alongside Anointer, so then I'm probably better off bouncing. Alright, so step one, bounce. Alright, there's a Drake. 
Although if I play Drake, I'll be shields down on Solfem's ability. They might have the minus one, minus one, proliferate trick in hand. So what are my options? Tap out for Drake. Potentially expose Solfem to removal. But if they don't have it, next turn Anointer gets to take out the Death Toucher. And then I might even be able to Volt Charge to deal 6 damage, which would be pretty great. So I think I do just uh, tap out here. I guess a minus 1, minus 1 kills Drake end of turn, so maybe that was the reason not to... Yeah. Not to play the Drake, since we kind of put the opponent on having it in hand. And I could have waited until Volt Charge was up to proliferate at instant speed. So... Identified which card they had in hand, but then didn't fully play around it, I guess. So we're still waiting for an extra oil counter source. Rot Priest, I see. Well, at least we can kill the Rot Priest with Volt Charge now. And attack for five. Still at six poison. This deals one more. So I don't love my position. What if I attack? Opponent falls to ten. Can play Anointer. Keep a Volt Charge. This essentially deals three poison. Just trying to see if we can maybe burn them out over the course of two turns. Or I can just pass with the plan of making indestructible. And just discard anointer land at this point. And a Spore Singer to proliferate, most likely. So we're up to 7 poison. So then do we just draw with a Furnace? Unctus we can play alongside Volcharge. Still missing a counter for Anointer. I feel like I have to spend my mana here on the Volt Charge. So we'll kill Rot Priest. Augury. Okay, so let's say we Augury. Is it better than playing Unctus? Might prefer the extra blocker, honestly. Keep land in hand or play it is another interesting question. We have some 7 drops in the deck, of course. Some 5 mana card draw that could require extra mana. Although we'd have to hate to discard uh, Augury and Anoiter here. So we'll pass. Four four haste. Toxic 3 is a must block. Don't think we activate Solfem. Watcher is an extra blocker, it's useful. And then I could still Augury. Should maybe Augury first. Synthesizer still doesn't set up the counter for Anointer, so I guess Blister Zoad is. Oh, Plague Nurse for additional Toxic. And there's the Insight. If I tap out for Blister Zoa, what happens? I mean, it feels like we need to add another creature to the board, and at least Blister Zoa sets up the Anointer a bit better. But a removal spell could be game over here. So this they can only activate once. 
brutalize her to proliferate. Throw at eight poison. And I doubt they'll attack. But maybe. Let's see, four attackers. Don't care about the uh, regular damage. Alright, opponent passes. So I can play Anoint her, which would deal one damage somewhere, so enough to kill a Skull Dweller or a Mover. And I add another four power blocker, so that's useful. And I don't think we have any attacks. I think I'll play out land so we can uh, maybe insight and play something else afterwards at this point. I think I want to insight next turn, and for that to work, probably better to play my lands out. Anointer getting pumped by Unctus as well, so that's nice. We do have another Volt Charge in the deck, which does represent 6 damage, so that could be a lethal top deck. Assuming we survive here. Another Haster. Uh-oh. No attacks. Okay. So, yeah, Skywarden, I guess, keeps up with the current board. Attack with our Flyer. And that's it. So nothing has really changed. We both added a creature to the board. Looking at the graveyard could be Skull Bomb getting something back. And yeah, the Rot Priest is a good one. Could get a Skull Dweller just to be able to replay it right away. When it passes, well, time for insights. Hopefully find a Volt Charge. Still have an Augury. Okay, what do we like? Can Insight play Splitter, Splitter Equip, points at 7, so Splitter Equip next turn would be lethal. And then we still get an extra token, so it feels safe enough to equip and attack. Alright, we got there. That was a close one. Okay, we're on the play. And this hand's pretty ugly, in the sense that we're missing blue, and we definitely need it. Now, any third land still plays Sprinter and Volt Charge, which, while not ideal, still gives us uh, some more defensive plays. If we do find an island right away, the hand's not bad, but still not, like, insane either. So I think I should mulligan. Okay. We'll keep this. Put a sprinter on the bottom. And hope to find a mountain. Oh, I just messed up. Should have played facade to uh, proliferate with augury. Could always wait a turn, although it would be nice to find a 3-drop. 
Do I still play it? Yeah, I think I should still find a 3-drop. Well, I guess uh, now the problem is if I want to grab Furnace, then I wouldn't be able to play Facade and proliferate onto it next turn. So I think I just grab the Insight since we might want the extra card draw. Okay. Don't have any one drops besides the skull bomb, which would have been a reason to augury main phase. But at least now we make them think about counter spells. That's an easy choice. Opponent off to a good start. Glad we grabbed the inside here. Find effect kills our rebel, and we take two more poison. So, corrupted is now online, and the Drake a little bit late to the party, but. Still gonna run it out before Insight, so it can start growing. Yeah, the Observer is gonna be scary late game. I've got a couple ways to remove it at least. Yeah, that's a good one. Killer Drake proliferates up to six poison here. And we don't have any answers in hand. Blisters are always a good draw. Are we gonna die to regular damage or poison first? The Raptor can hit for four, at least one turn. Prowler times down Blister Zoa, take... Yeah, I think we're just... Uh... Well, I guess we're at one. They cannot activate Raptor four times, otherwise it dies. So they can hit for eight. But uh, yeah, we seem pretty dead. Can't think of any top decks that save us. Nine poison, one life. We've been here before. But this time we're not going to survive, sadly. Can play Skywarden, and uh, yeah, that's it. GG's. That was a quick one. On the draw, no early plays. And uh, yeah, just a good curve out draw from our opponents with a timely removal spell or two. Is always going to be good and limited. Technically, we could have the 5 damage instant here since we control an equipment, but our opponent's just gonna poison us to death with the Observer. Okay, so lots of close games here in this first Phyrexia all will be one draft. And uh, yeah, poison is certainly a thing. I think we only got poisoned to death in one of those games, if I'm not mistaken, but uh, definitely got close a few times, and the threat is always there, so definitely forces you to play a little bit differently. It's not like uh, taking one or two poison damage is the end of the world. It's mostly the third point that starts making a difference, and then the tenth one as well. Sweet. Let's crack some packs, I guess. I'm not sure if we have the entire collection already, or if we actually get to see the rare. Yeah, I guess that's the downside of the fully unlocked account, is that there's no rares left to discuss. Oh well. I guess we'll uh, save it for our own account. And yeah, that's gonna wrap things up for this video, but I wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.